Francis Edgerton, 3rd Duke of Bridgewater, owned some of the coal mines, dug to supply northwest England with fuel for the steam engines, instrumental in growing England's industrial revolution. The Duke transported his coal along the Mersey and Irwell navigation, which was next to the Manchester Ship Canal, currently exists, didn't exist when this canal was first built. You'll see how old it is. So he transports his coal along the Mersey and Irwell navigation, which is Basically the Irwell has been banked up and so has the Mersey. They used to also travel by pack horse so a lot of horses could pull quite a lot of weight but not as much as the canals. I think it was sort of like 10 times as much uh, a horse can pull 10 times more weight if it's on a barge than if it's on the roads. Each method was inefficient and expensive to be fair. River transport was subject to the vagaries of river navigation and the amount of coal pack horses could carry was limited by its relative weight. The Duke's underground mines also suffered from persistent flooding caused by the geology of the middle coal measures where coal seam lies beneath a layer of permeable stone so it absorbs water down into the mine it's permeable sandstone I think there's sandstone that's also not permeable I have to look into that because there's sections of the canal where you can see the bare rock so it obviously you know there's unless it's coated on the outside that so it doesn't leak water from the canal and basically it's the first canal of the industrial revolution and the first of its type in the world yes the world having visited the canal um, Canal du Midi in France, which is famous as one of the first. It's a classic canal. Everyone can find that on the internet if you search. Just the first French canal. Uh, so, you watch the construction of the Sankey Canal in England. The Duke's solution to these problems was to build an underground canal at Worsley, um, connected to the surface canal between Worsley and Salford. You know what, I've got an idea of where that is, so we're going to have a look at that one day. Now that is interesting. There's also a navigation from the Bridgewater Canal at Castlefield that you can't get to anymore but it's a big lock and I think it's a medlock navigation so originally canal barges could go down onto the medlock possibly onto the Irwell that's what it seems like but it could be something to do with this so we'll look into that I'm saying it's going to be quite complicated to explain the infrastructure of the canals just like it would be with the trains and of course it's not really there anymore but Luckily the channels are blocked but they're still there, the outlets, so you can identify places. So I'm going to try and do a little bit of the ring of all the Manchester canals. There's only two more to be honest and they will just get the ship canals workings and I want to get some of the lock gates along the canal and the ship canal because they must be huge basically and it must be tidal at some point because it meets the sea so it's also a bit of an adventure for myself 
the Jurassic Canal is new to me as well. Decided to go a little bit further once I saw the Ashton Canal. There's a lot to explain, but I'll only explain things as they happen. I'm not sure how in depth I'm going to make these. I still will finish the Rapsail Canal, the Berry Bolton Canal. Uh, Bridgewater Canal is in the last video for the Castlefield Basin. Uh, talk about the Romans. But where I actually started from, next to the Bridgewater Hall, is where the Berry Bolton and Manchester Canal Company's canal would have come through from underneath the GMEX, and that was the section, as I say, was never opened. So we do a full loop and end up basically over the road from where we start. I only just found that out. Okay. I'm learning as I go, which makes it more interesting, I think. Even though I'm from Manchester, I don't know everything about its history, but that's what we're trying to find out. Also, the big freight train that most people see going through Manchester used to go to the ship canal that now goes directly to Liverpool so it must all be linked somehow so I'll get an explanation of that I'm not going to fill the whole ship canal but it might be on the cards that I travel to Liverpool and film the docks just to show you where it comes out but the ship canal doesn't actually go directly into Liverpool we'll explain that when we get onto the ship canal though for now we're walking along the Bridgewater Canal. Remember I said there's locks that may connect down from this canal to a river. Also, the canal was in the coal mine, which is unusual, but remember there's no trains, it's all horses dragging things around. So, yeah, that, why not? It fills up with water anyway, so build a canal down there and have locks going up. It must have had some way of getting the water from the mine. don't know how, but we'll find that out. So it's going to be some old, old engineering techniques and some very strange and peculiar ways of emptying and filling it, I'm sure. You know, horses probably did a lot of, you know, pulling things, wheels around that maybe pumped the water out of the mine that was unnecessary. Anyway, you could even fill up a barge with water as crazy as that sounds and float that up in the lock and then leave it at the top something along those lines we'll find out as we always do the underground canal will provide a reliable source of water for the surface canal so they bring it up somehow and also eliminate the need to lift the coal to the surface an expensive and difficult proposition ah, so the canal boats would carry 30 long tons, it's 30 tons at a time. So they come up through locks from. So basically, the Bridgewater Canal has locks that go down into other, into mines, down to rivers. I've already seen one which is closed off, so I know that they're there. Right. So this is an old construction, so it's linked up to everywhere. Whereas the other ones would have been linked by other systems, trains come in, etc. So the first canals would have been very peculiar, they would have got better each time they built one. That's how these things work. Um, so 30 long tons pulled by just one horse, so it can pull more than 10 times the amount of cargo per horse that was possible with a cart. The Duke and his estate manager John Gilbert produced a plan of the canal and in 1759, <clears throat> that's 260 years ago, 261 years ago, they obtained an act of parliament enabling the construction. Remember it's got to cross over rivers and things like that, just like the modern ones. So he has to invent things. He has to come up with ingenious ideas to build this thing 
some of it's wind powered. It's, it's very long straight so it catches the wind and they had um, masks on the actual canal barges and I've seen drawings, there's obviously no photographs. Cameras weren't invented for another hundred years after this canal. Uh, James Brindley was brought in for his technical expertise as usual having previously installed a pumping system at the nearby wet earth colliery. Uh, after a six day visit suggested burying the route of the proposed canal away from Salford. Instead taking it across the river Irwell to Stratford and there on into Manchester. This route would make connecting to any future canals in the ring much easier. It would also increase competition with the Mersey and Irwell Navigation Company. Brindley moved into Worsley Old Hall and spent 46 days surveying the proposed route, which to cross the Irwell would require the construction of an aqueduct at Barton upon Irwell at the Duke's um, what do we say, behest. That means he gave permission in January 1760. Uh, Brindley also travelled to London to give evidence before a parliamentary committee. The Duke therefore gained a second Act of Parliament, which superseded the original. So basically, he's got the power now to do what he wants, as long as it's going to make loads and loads of money, and uh, that's the plan, ultimately. Brindley's planned route began at Worsley. Uh, incidentally, it's still a private company. The Bridgewater Canal Company still run the Bridgewater Canal. Still active, I'll find out, but I would assume it's been active all the time right through. It never closed down, never went into disrepair because it's attached to the ship canal possibly, so it's kept its business. But it's still in good condition. Um, might have some pollution though, because I've noticed some of the fish aren't doing so well. That's a different story. <clears throat> Still a marvel, this thing. So yeah, we're just going to stroll up along, because this is basically an introduction, like a sneak peek. So, Hume Locks in Castlefield. We filmed them before. Uh, previously occupied by Hume Hall. This was not completed until 1838 so let's go back to the aqueduct let's try and make sense of this so Brindley's planned route began at Worsley and passed southeast through Eccles southeast yes uh, before turning it'll be south to cross the river Irwell on the Barton aqueduct from there it continued southeast along the edge of Trafford Park, which is not Old Trafford, Trafford Park. Trafford Park, incidentally, was the biggest industrial estate in the world at one point, and the first of its kind still is one of the biggest industrial estates in the world. Um, and then east into Manchester. Uh, then it went east into Manchester. Although a connection with the Mersey and Irwell navigation was included in the new act at Hume Locks in Castlefield. That's on land previously occupied by Hume Hall. This was not completed until 1838. The terminus would be at Castlefield Basin, where the nearby River Medlock was to help supply the canal with water it does the canal the medlock joins the canal but you don't notice it i i should have explained that when i was there but i've only found out recently I've, i learn as i go and that's how it's it's better to learn as you go and you put it together and then you'll you remember it better i think you actually remember the names and the mills and it takes time but i'm going to build it up slower so the nearby river medlock joins the canal keeps it all filled up and then it flows down through the lock system so I'm gonna to have to film that lock system because I found it and it's fenced off because it must be unsafe but it's so tempting 
and I wondered what it was because there's two locks next to each other in a massive basin so it must be able to drop like five canal barges at once I can't explain it but it goes down under towards either the Irwell or, but it looks like the medlock then leads back down so the medlock disappears into the canal and then becomes the medlock again down on the other side of the canal so it just disappears into the canal for a bit so it's on the site of the old medlock and the old Hume Hall there we go so it doesn't disappear into a culvert the canal is part of the medlock Medlock will fill it as far as the first locks, just naturally, like a siphon system. So I didn't know that. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. It goes in and comes out without even being noticed. This helps supply the canal with water, the medlock. Boats would unload their cargoes inside the Duke's purpose built warehouse. So I think I'm onto that, and we'll find that. Not today, but I can show you that. That'll be the next movie. So we're already on the bridge water. I can't help myself. It's fascinating. It's not miles and miles long, by the way. It does link up to the Leeds, Liverpool, and we're not going to do Leeds and Liverpool. Maybe another decade, you know what I mean? Another lifetime, maybe. But I've got to finish the Rochdale Canal, Berry Canals, Ashton I've found now, Bridgewater, and we're going to call that that's it, I'm going to set my mind on concentrating on those and then maybe a few more reservoirs and mills in between to break things up uh, feed the canals etc also goes into the Peak District which are fascinated and there's coal mines and floods and all sorts of things that happened for hundreds of years that I want to document and find out about so I've got enough info for at least another year's worth <laughs> pretty good quality movies and documentaries and information before it all disappears just over there Manchester there's a lot we're going to take a look at that's our mysterious mystery lock it seems to drop down into a massive area Charlton was in local newspapers just this week the residents are complaining it's basically been wiped off the map by Manchester's newest developments just like the Duke, back in the day, 17th of July, 1761, first boat crossed the Barton Aqueduct. There's a lock on the other side, making the lock gate unnecessary, unless the whole thing empties down to a lower level. Going over and have a look at that. Finlay's design, demonstrating his ability as a competent engineer, once again. The Duke invested a large sum of money in the scheme from Worsley to Manchester. Its construction cost £168,000. It's the equivalent of £26 million in today's money. That's just a small section that connects it to Manchester. In addition to the Duke's warehouse at Manchester, more buildings were built by Brindley and extended to All Park Street, now called Deansgate. Duke's warehouse was badly damaged by fire in 1789 and has been through lots of wars and fights and great depressions. Manchester to Runcorn extension in September 1761. With his assistant Hugh Holden, Brindley surveyed an extension from Longford Bridge to Hemstones. So, as if by magic, I'm looking over there, I've jumped over. So there's a lock gate there, and it's at the same height as the lock gate here. The only thing that could happen there is this whole area drops down. I cannot look at it to it if it's unsafe. But I need to find out where that drops down to. We'll go over and have a look. 
and let's not forget it's Manchester UK three videos of time I'm Stephen Goddard so it leaves the bridge walls the canal and drops down somewhere we don't know where just yet and I'm not trying to look like one of the Blues Brothers or a rock and roll star these are actually my prescription glasses I'm wearing due to it being unusual lighting it's going bright and then dark again so anyway I'm not going into my eyesight that's the reason I'm wearing black shades and here is a lock and that's the original Bridgewater Canal on that side and there's something here because they always leave it the ruins to it that looks like um, it was a steam crane circular crane so obviously that lock's seen better days our evidence well my evidence I'm going to try and explain to you I can see the water flowing it's going through there so some point the medlock enters I think that feeds off down there back to ours the rivers so here's a clue Hume Junction Lock, that'll be the one. Cheshire Ring and the Manchester Ship Canal. And we've seen all the other things, the Bridgewater Canal, Grocer's Warehouse, Castlefield Canal Basin, the Rochdale Canal ends there, and the Cheshire Ring East. So we're going to head on to the Cheshire Ring West. Well, that's what we're on, on this Bridgewater Canal. And that's in an island in the middle of the canal. And that's where I'm going to end this because it's just an introduction into further canals. We will do Salby Bridge because I need to explain Salby Bridge links to Ashton Canal. I'm going to follow the Roxdale Canal to Littleborough, show you the little link that. I said it was a drain, but it isn't. It links up to Ashton Canal, and we'll explain that. And we'll flip over to Ashton Canal and go as far up that, and I'm going to follow the Peak District Canal, Narrow Canal. That is the next plan, and I'll be reading up about the Bridgewater Canal because it's really complicated because it goes through the city, and I'm going to just get the good bits, like the swing bridges and how it joins to the Ship Canal. So, I'll probably do a movie one day of just the Bridgewater Canal. I don't want to film open stretches of it for miles and miles, get some barges, tell you about where it goes, which towns and the major lock gates. Then we'll go through Manchester, show you the Medlock and our little mystery lock gate that links up to a river somewhere and then we'll go up the Ashton Canal into the peaks and who knows what we're going to find up there, we'll probably find like Roman castles and I don't know <laughs> I don't even know what we'll find so thanks for watching Manchester please like and subscribe to the videos it doesn't cost anything it takes two minutes it just helps me make more videos thank you have a good day so let's just go through a little bit of the science that we can work out so most of what I've said, well, everything I've said, although I've predicted it, is all correct. So the Medlock flows in uh, next to the grocer's warehouse. It then returns down into the Irwell, part of the Potato Wharf and the Hume Branch Canal Lock. That's what the lock is. It's the Hume Branch Canal which must have flowed along as part of the Irwell 
at some point and then leaves the Irwell. So it connects to all the other canals, like I said, can switch about through this lot. So it'd be the Berry Bolton Canal, for example. They enter the Salford Locks, which is at the end of the Manchester Ship Canal. Manchester Ship Canal has a lock which enters the River Irwell, or the Irwell Navigation. That's where the drain that goes under the canal, under the canal. down to the River down Irwell. The river Irwell the the side. Side. As I said, the down. That's Palm Brook Bridge, bridge no no which was then linked up to the Bridgewater Canal via the Hume Lock that we saw. So it was important, I was fascinated by it, so that is very important because that little lock gate that looks disused and a bit broken, this one, and then the bridge and all the rest of it was the main link between the north of Manchester and the south of Manchester and the ring of the Cheshire Ring and the Manchester Ring. So it's an important part. So over the other side, if you drop down now, that'll be the River Irwell. So the rivers Irk and Medlock have now both joined the Irwell, along with the River Roach, of course, and the Crowell from Bolton. So there's now five major rivers, and as you can see, it's a major water source now, it's a major body of water. So it, just round the corner, down on the other side, it does turn into the Manchester Ship Canal. So there's lock gates, they're not going to be as part of this video, but obviously that's the next section. Because I said it would be complicated, it's best to explain as we go. So we've got the Medlock entering, we know the Rotsdale Canal enters. Ashton Canal joins the Rotsdale Canal. And it's not too complicated. When we go to the Ship Canal, we can explain Panama Island, how you'd go over Calm Brook Bridge to get down into the old wharf which was Trafford Wharf it's now Salford Keys uh, but the Manchester Ship Canal is an upgrade of the Irwell Navigation which was the original basically dug it deeper they dug the canal along the side of the Irwell and then the Irwell now joins the Ship Canal and becomes the Manchester Ship Canal um, as part of that I'll explain what happens with the River Mersey because the River Mersey flows through Manchester. I know it's famous as the River of Liverpool, <clears throat> but it sources actually um, the southeast. Yeah, south. It's like east southeast of Manchester. So and it flows out all the way down to the sea through Liverpool. buildings like this obviously weren't always in the city centre it was fields I'm just going to show you a reminder of that and the original road or the oldest road is Princess Street so we're going to see Princess Street Bridge and that would have been in an open area so the original canal lock is through the other side of the bridge it's quite a substantial length and that's Canal Street lock so next it would be Piccadilly Basin where Ashton Canal joins. So thanks for watching Manchester. Please like and subscribe to the videos. It doesn't cost anything. It takes two minutes. It just helps me make more videos. Thank you. Bridgewater Canal introduction.